in this important matter. Uh, point of order, Kirsty Blackman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mr. Speaker, I wonder if you could advise me about which courses of action are available to raise the issue. The Chief Minister of Gibraltar has, I understand, been briefed by the Minister of State for Europe. I understand that no such courtesy has been afforded to the Scottish Government. Mr Speaker, how do I bring a minister here to ask why the Scottish Government has not yet seen the final deal, what Gibraltar has? Yeah. <sighs> there may be an opportunity for an exchange later in the day. The Minister for the Cabinet Office is perched as though he is about to leap to his feet with alacrity to respond through me to the Honourable Lady. Minister Liddington. If it will help the, the Honourable Lady, I had a very constructive meeting with the First Ministers of both Wales and Scotland last Friday morning where we discussed, where we, where we discussed the progress of negotiations as they were at that point. My right honourable friend, the Prime Minister, will, uh, will, when the Cabinet has taken a view exactly. and come to a decision exactly. about what has been agreed provisionally between negotiators, talk directly to the First Ministers of Scotland and Wales, because it is quite right that they should be fully briefed on what it is that the Cabinet has decided. Thank you. Oh, very well. I hope it's not vexatious. I hope it's not a point of frustration, Mr Doherty Hughes. Point of order, Mr Martin Doherty Hughes. I wouldn't be frustrated at all, Mr Speaker. Um, <coughs> especially not in here. Um, one year has now passed since my constituent Jagtar Singh Johal has been arrested in India with neither evidence nor a witness placed before a court of law and report of torture placed before the United Nations Rapporteur on Torture. I have raised the issue to you previously, Mr Speaker, seeking ministerial responses to both letters to requesting meetings with the Foreign Secretary. A commitment was given the last time I raised this on the very floor of the House. Can, the, can you assure me, Mr Speaker, that the new Foreign Secretary, while I am standing here and my constituents' brothers in the undergallery, that that commitment could be made either through a statement to the House or by me writing to the Minister directly yet again, as I have done already? Well, I am sorry that it is necessary for the Honourable Gentleman repeatedly to write to Ministers on this matter, and it is obvious that he is dissatisfied with the response or lack thereof. My only advice to the Honourable Gentleman is the advice I usually give to members irritated in these circumstances, which is persist. Persist, man. Persist. And the Honourable Gentleman is a dexterous and adroit parliamentary performer, and he will know the instruments that are available to him. And if he believes, as I rather imagine he does, that the matter is urgent, he may wish to deploy a procedure that might give him a chance of raising the matter with a minister